Hi everyone, my name is Kingsley and I want to welcome you to this section of the video on the implementation of our route reflectors for IBGP pairing and design. This is going to be the part 3. Now if I bring out my topology, we've uh, covered a lot up to this uh, very time. Uh, we've uh, configured the route reflectors and we have uh, uh, also uh, paired with the EBGP neighbors that includes router 5, uh, router 6, router 11, router 10 and we have looked at the, the design uh, we've seen uh, some of the issues we have with uh, BGP pair with uh, EBGP and we have um, made some modifications uh, especially the, the desktop issues uh, remember we talked about that when you learn prefixes from an EBGP pair and you advertise it on IBGP pair, you don't modify the next up, right? So all what we have been doing, especially in the part two, was to uh, make sure that we set the next up to uh, the PE routers so that uh, uh, within the call, uh, other provider edge devices be able to perform route recursions to uh, those customers or to those EBGP uh, pair. So, if I bring out my pen, uh, so what we currently have is that uh, we've configured this part. So what we did here, we used route policy uh, or a route map to see when you learn prefixes from route 5 and you advertise it to your IBGP pair, please go ahead and set the next stop to the loop back of route 1. So we also done the same thing for route 3. Uh, so route 3, what we did was we simply enabled this interface for IGP. Uh, in this case, we used uh, uh, intermediate system to intermediate system. Similarly, on this part, we uh, uh, we use redistribution. So we took all the prefixes from our 10, include this point to point link, and we advertise it into the BGP core, and we set the next stop to the loopback of a uh, out of four. Here, we simply use the passive interface command. Uh, we talked about the passive interface. Uh, is used to filter IGP outbound to router 6. It means when you use the passive interface, uh, uh, IGP routes or IGP prefixes will not be sent out, or IGP updates will not be sent out, hello messages will not be sent out to uh, router 6. But we did say that when you enable passive on this interface, it means it automatically uh, show up in the IGP. So with that, all these routers within the core will be able to perform recursion to six here I think we use route map okay so route map in iOS is route map but in iOS XR is route policy or the route policy uh, language so that's what we have done so the only part that is left is between route of five and route of three uh, so what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to take all the prefixes from route of five and I'm just going to locally originate them here which is really what most providers will do today especially uh, for uh, customers that might be on private peering or public peering, uh, you might not necessarily be the one originating prefixes, but the provider is going to be and uh, might as well originate the prefixes on your behalf. So we can come here and say, okay, for all the prefixes that Rota 5 has, we are going to originate them here and they advertise it to our IBGP uh, 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 neighbors. So in that case, whenever all this I so long it, it's not going to cause a problem. You might say, well, why would you be originating prefixes that you don't own, or why not just let router five originate the prefix? Of course, router five is already originated those prefixes. We could either set the next stop here. We could tell router three why you send it to your IGP neighbors. You can set the next stop to yourself, okay? So that when they are trying to get to router five, of course, the next stop will be router three. And so they will be able to perform route recursion to this destination. But like I said, we can as well originate the prefixes. So long as the theory knows how to reach these IGPs or these uh, prefixes that actually belong to Route 5, it's not going to cause any uh, problem. This is, uh, I would say, providers will want to do this, uh, help customers to originate their prefixes, and, and it that shouldn't be cause uh, any any type of problem. Of course, customers can as well just originate their prefixes, and you apply a policy here that will just, uh, of course, allow those prefixes to be advertised to the internet. So, if I should bring up uh, the 
topology as it is now. So let me bring on my cursor and uh, let's see my pen. Okay, so I bring on my cursor as it is right now. A lot of messages here, so let me clean it up. So if I go to router 3, so this is currently router 3. So if I say uh, show IP BGP summary, so currently we have a pairing with router 5, as you can see here. Okay. Uh, so, but like I said, we don't yet have, uh, we have not yet modified the next talk information because as it is never say show IP BGP neighbor, I want to ask router 2, when I send BGP prefixes to you, about route 5 what is the next so I, i'm going to say advertise routes so this is what we are currently advertising to route 2 okay so what you're going to see is that for this prefix which is coming from route 5 of 5.5.5 slash 32 you're going to see that uh, the prefix the next stop is not being modified the next stop is still pointed to route 5 okay but the problem is, like we've earlier explained, time without number is that IGPs by default will not be able to request to those uh, EBGP and Nestor because uh, they they don't have, they cannot perform route recursion to those prefixes, okay? Because those, that Nestor is inaccessible or because that Nestor is uh, unreachable. So, like I said, what we can simply do here is to say, Okay, so 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 if I go to router two, let's say router two, I'm going to say show IPBGP, okay, for one seventy two dot twenty dot five dot five slash thirty two, okay. So it's going to say uh, currently I can learn about that from router one. I can also learn about that from router uh, router three, okay. It's saying the next stop is thirty five dot five. Is saying that the next stop is 1.1. One one. So he, although he errors, it is saying that he can, but he's not saying, he's saying the metric of that part is currently 20. So let's say, I'm going to ask you, say, show IP routes, okay, to 172.16.35.5. How do you get to that name? See, still going back to router one, right? So the, the, the idea is this, okay? Uh, let me bring up my pen. Okay, rather if I take all its prefixes, send it to rather three. Okay, the rather three doesn't modify the next stop before it to rather three. Okay, so when you forward it, it's pointed to the next stop of uh, 35, 35. Uh, so it's pointing to the next stop of 172.16.35.5, I guess. Now the question is, can rather two get to this next stop, which is actually this physical interface here? Okay, so when we look at the table, let's, let me just minimize this here so we can understand what we're talking about. Okay, so rather two is saying, um, so let me bring it up a little, minimize this part. So as currently term, rather two is saying, I have two parts, okay, to get to that. Uh, prefix which is uh, the loop back of router 5 I can either go through router 1 or I can go straight to router 5 this is what router 3 I'm learning that part from router 3 I'm learning this part from router 1 okay so I now ask this router how do you actually get to 172.16.5.5 which is the next stop of of this uh, our router router 1 now it's telling me where for me to get there, I'm still going to have to use router one. So the question is, why is it not using router? Why is it not going through router three, or why is it not just going straight to uh, that interface on router five? Of course, the reason is that part is not accessible. Because if I should go to router one, let's show that that interface. Uh, so let me use Cisco, Cisco, Cisco. Okay, so if I go to config T, I just say interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot, uh, I think that should be 1, 5. I'm going to shut it down and hit commit. So that interface is down right now. So that's going to cause router 1 to withdraw those prefixes. 
And so if we go to router 2 and I ask router 2, how do you, I'm going to ask, how do you not get to this prefix? He said, I only have one path, right? So I'm learning it from router 3 and my next stop is this. However, this next stop is inaccessible. Here yeah, it was accessible because it was able to recast to that prefix or that to that path through router 1. But now that router 1 is shut down, look at what it's telling us. So the easy way to force to fix this is simply rename those prefixes. So I'm going to just come here and say uh, router BGP1. Okay, under the address family IPv4, IPv4 unicast. I'm going to be or rename those prefixes. The first one is going to be this. Okay, copy paste. Okay, uh, so this is not XR, so we have to type it full. Okay, so the other one is going to be um, dot five dot slash twenty four. So this is like uh, we don't really need to do this here. Um, we can, but okay. So let, let's just leave it with this. All right. So with this, I think we should be fine. And uh, I just save. Okay. All right, so you're going to see right now that if we not ask router 2, how do you get to 5.5.5? .5 okay, so we're going to clear IP BGP start out. Uh, for neighbor, clear IP BGP uh, for 172.20.3.3. Uh, we're going to say, um, yeah, you just hit enter. So that's going to cause uh, 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 the the peer session, the session between router two and router three to flop, and it's back up. So if I say show IPBGP, so I'm just going to use my up arrow key. So this is inaccessible. So let's just give it some time. Show IPBGP uh, for five dot five dot five, I believe. So currently it's still not accessible because the next one is still not being modified. Right? So let's go to router 3 and let's ask router 3. When you say show IP BGP neighbor, when you advertise neighbor to uh, 2.2, .2, what is the next stop for router 5? So currently it's still being advertised to router 2. At the next stop is still not being modified. I thought we already needed this prefix. So session run pipe section router BGP. Okay, so currently we are advertising that prefix. Okay, so let me say show IP BGP regjects. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, one. Okay, so I think we might have a problem here because okay, so let me say anything that does not have any prefix. So this was locally originated, but 5.5 .5 isn't even here. Okay, so so I think so so let's say show run five section rather BGP. So we are actually originating the prefix, but uh, for no reason that prefix is not being advertised. So uh, okay, so so the point is, is it that we cannot advertise prefixes from an ABGP pair? That's strange. Show IPGP. So I'm learning of okay. So let's clear the process here. Clear IPVGP star. Okay. So let's just clear the process. Um, show IPVGP. Let's give it some time. Okay. So let's give it some time to pick up. So so what we're looking for is five dot five. Okay. I want it to show me that this prefix was locally originated. Okay. Let's give it some time. Show run pipe section router BGP. 
Okay. So we still have it there. So let's add sort of five. Show IPVGP. So five is originating it already. Likewise, router three is also originated that prefix. Okay, because if I say show IPBGP 5.5, uh, okay, so it's taking uh, so long for, okay, so let's see. So it seems that, okay, so this is for 5.5. For, for, for 5.5, it's saying, yes, I'm originating it perfect. Okay, so let's say, let me ask it, say show IPBGP. This is the upper key. When you advertise prefixes to okay, so show IPGP neighbor for 172 dot 16 uh, dot uh, let's say 20 dot 2 dot 2. What are you advertising? So five is being advertised, but the next stop is still not being modified. Um okay, so uh, that's really strange to me. I don't know why. I, I mean, uh, not the way I actually do understand it, that uh, I can actually originate prefixes on behalf of a neighbor, right? So, uh, what I'm not sure is, can I originate prefixes for, my, for, my, for an EBGP pair? Because it currently stands, the next stop is still not, uh, uh, we're still not able to reach our tree. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, go back and check on it and to know, uh, when do you or when can you uh, originate prefixes for an uh, EBGP pair? So it seems that method is not going to work. So uh, what, I, what I'm just going to do here is uh, go back to our next uh, last method. So I'm just going to uh, you know just enable IGP on that interface. Uh, you don't want to do that in the real world, uh, but uh, this is a lab environment as well. You can as well go ahead and, and do it. So I'm going to say config T. I'm going to say uh, T. I'm going to say interface D uh, one dot uh, dot five. I guess so. Let's just verify. Do sure interface D one dot dot five. So so so. Uh, I mean, you can write your comment below the uh, the video. Tell me um, what we are doing wrong and we'll learn and and move on. Uh, that would be great. But I'm also going to find out why was it that when I originated those prefixes uh, of an EBGP pair, those prefixes were still the next of was still pointing to uh, route three. So here I'm going to uh, just say uh, interface gig one dot thirty five. Uh, interface gig one dot thirty five. Okay, so I'm just going to say IP router ISIS one. I think that was the section we're running. So if I say show IP, uh, so I say show IP route ISIS. Uh, so we should be learning about, okay, so we're not really going to be learning those prefaces, but I think if we now go to router 2 and ask it, how do you get to, uh, you know, uh, 5.5.5, now it's showing two parts, uh, it's learning it from router 1, but the next stop is the, 5.5. So the, the next stop is still not modified, but the, 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 the point is uh, because we are advertising that slash 24 prefix, that point to point link to between router 3 and router uh, 2. So uh, we are not able to, uh, you know, perform route recursion to that next stop because I can see I want to ping 172.20.5.5 on the sources on my loopback. So we now have end-to-end -end reachability. So with the way it is now, I guess we are pretty much good. Okay. So uh, if I bring all the topology, uh, so we now have. Um, so let me bring out my pen. So uh, the way it is now, every router in the topology should have. They should have what we call full convergence. In the sense that uh, router 11, so if I go to router 11 here, look at my pen. So router 11 should be able to get to any prefix. Okay, so router 11 should be able to get through the core for router 10. 
uh, same with uh, to rather six and same with to rather five and same to all the loopback interfaces that exist in the core so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go to all the uh, PS, especially the EBGP PS, and we're going to run the TCL, uh, TCL script just to check if they have end-to-end -end connectivity to all the prefixes in the network. So I'm going to just clean this, uh, bring up my cursor. So I'm going to bring up a notepad. Let's use notepad for that. Uh, we're going to run a TCL script. Uh, so for iOS, it's yeah, uh, uh, I think we, we are pretty much used to that. I think I've used that in a uh, previous video. So I'm going to say TCL. Then I'm going to say for each. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use a curly bracket. I'm just going to type 172.20.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
Alright, so child prospect is dictated normally in value source address. Source is going to be dollar i. Okay, so what are we doing wrong here? Let me use control C to come out. We say set i. Okay, so um oh this is wrong, right? So this is not wrong. Then so let's fix that. So it's gonna be ten dot ten, right? So let's copy and paste. Okay, so I just pray we have for convergence, right? So as it is. Uh, we're able to get all the loopback addresses of all the routers. That pretty much tells us that um, router 10 to is uh, fully converged. So the next one is going to be router 6 or router 5. So let's check that out. So I'm going to go to route. I think router 5 is XR, router 6 is uh, iOS. So let's grab our iOS script. So for the iOS, we don't need to modify anything. Because we are just pointing to the loopback address, which is uh, various. So router six, let's see where's my router router six. So this is my router six. So similarly on router six, uh, so I'm going to copy this. Let's let's also paste this uh, this TCF script on router six. So on router six, uh, so I'm going to just going to say TCL uh, shell, okay. So I'm going to paste it. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, so we are having issues with getting to router five. Okay, so we don't have reachability to router five. That's what this is telling us. So we are going to have to investigate that. Uh, at the same time, let's check router five. The router six can't get to router five. So I'm going to assume that router five to shouldn't be able to get to router six so router five uh so let's paste okay that look back is correct i guess so uh okay so we're still hitting uh the brick wall here so the way it is now it seems let me bring up the topology okay so Currently, we have full end-to-end reachability, I guess, for every other router because we tried it for router 11. Router 11 could get to all the loopback addresses within uh, the network. But the problem we are having now is that router 6 cannot ping the loopback address of router 5. Similarly, router 5 is not able to ping the loopback of router 6. Okay, so this is uh, obviously a design issue because if you recall, remember here we are running uh, autonomous system 56. Here too, we are running autonomous system 56. And so remember here is eBGPS, right? So it means when router 6 originates its prefixes and forward it to router 4 or forward it to router 2, it's going to include its own AS path information. So in this case, its own AS path is right so router 2 is going to forward it to router 1 router 4 2 is going to forward it to router 3. now here is what the problem is when router 1 gets it router 1 remember is running xr right router 1 is going to look at the as path information that is carried in the route in the attributes of the route it's going to see autonomous system 56 and ixr automatically know that this network also have an autonomous system of 56. So what it's going to do is going to see it as a loop and say, oh, well, this number is 56 and we are learning prefixes that's also 56. This is going to cost a loop. So what X arrow by default does is, is that it's going to filter it outbound. So router 5 will not even learn of these prefixes that are coming in from router 6 because router 1 by default sees those, those prefixes as a sort of a loop and then filter it outbound. But for router 3, Router 3 is going to forward it because Router 3 is typically an iOS. So iOS by default 
will send the prefixes outbound, it will filter it. But the problem is, when other five gets it, other five is going to look at the AS part information in the prefix and see that it's also the same with its own AS, right? So we said, of course, AS part information is one of the mechanisms used by BGP to prevent routing loss, right? Between eBGP pairs. So if I if you send me prefixes, or if I'm learning some prefixes, I'm going to look at the AS part information that is contained in those prefixes. If my AS is already included in the part, that automatically tell me that those prefixes either originated from my from my from my network earlier or have already gone through my network and this is the sort of loop and I'm going to discard it. So that is what Rata 5 is going to do here because Rata 5 is going to see those prefixes as being that it carries its own autonomous system is going to automatically so if we should go to let's say let's go to router six uh, I think router six will be uh, pretty much easier because it's uh, because router 6 is iOS, so we're going to do a debug on router 6. Okay, I'm going to say this here uh, quit. I'm going to say debug IP BGP update. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to flap the, uh, the prefix. Uh, uh, I could shut down the interface and bring it back up. So I'm going to say dig one. I'm going to shut and no shots. So, I think she'll be back up. Uh, do show, uh, do show IP. Okay, so okay, so we are reconverging, I guess. Um, from here, <coughs> um, so let's give it some time. So if we screw up, uh, here is saying um. Okay, so I think we've seen what we're looking for. So I'm just going to do on the bug off. Now, if you screw up a little bit uh, to uh, this part, look at what it says here. Just hold on a little bit. All right, so it says, I received prefixes from router 2 for this for uh, 172.16.15.0 I also received prefixes from router 2 on the loopback address of router 6 I mean router 5 this time he said deny why because AS part contain our own AS okay same with this prefix he said due, denied due to the AS part contain our own AS part information so just like I earlier explained, okay, so what I said earlier was that the routers are going to look at the BGP update or the prefixes that has been advertised to them or they are learning. They are always going to check the AS part information. And if the AS part information contains information about their own AS, that automatically tell the router that this looks like a loop. Okay, uh, this is a loop, and so they are going to uh, deny those prefixes. They are going to, they are not going to allow those prefixes into their BGP table, so they will not be stored in the routing table, and then that will they be uh, in, uh, for uh, be uh, added to the uh, forwarding uh, information base. Okay, so uh, it's a design issue. Uh, we have to find a way around it to resolve it. So what we earlier said was this: that for iOS XRO. Now the update we are getting was coming from router two, right? So router five send it to router one, okay? Ultimately, router one also advertises it to router two, and router two then forward it to router six, okay? So when router six learn about those prefixes, it discarded them because the AS part information is contained on it. But however, definitely those prefixes were also coming in from router three or router four. And ultimately, maybe router four was also getting it either from router three or directly from router one. But the idea is because this is an XRO, they filter those prefixes out by default. Okay, so as is, is advertising prefixes to router six, you automatically go to the day that router five prefixes that those prefixes are already uh, in a contain the AS part information of the six. 
So he knows that this network here is AS56, so router 4 is going to filter it out. Run. That's why when we get those BGP, when we got those BGP updates, they were only coming in from router 2. So we have two solutions. There is what we call the BGP AS override feature. So this is the feature of BGP, BGP AS override. We also have BGP allow, allow as in. Okay. The idea is this. On router 4, we can tell router 4 that when you advertise those prefixes to router 6, and you see that the AS part information or some of those prefixes are originated from 56, we want you to override them. And that is what we call the AS override. So what router 4 is going to do is that it's going to strip out this AS and replace it and, re and replace it with its own autonomous system. So when router 6 now learn of those prefixes, so instead of it to carry 56 1, it's now going to carry 1 1 showing that i mean overriding that original prefixes of what prefixes so we can tell router 4 to do that so router 4 is going to do an as override outbound to router 6 so that when router 6 sees it and learn of those prefixes it's going to now carry this as part information so it, that automatically uh, will now allow router 6 to accept those prefixes and then install it in its own uh, routing table Another one, another uh, some another option is uh, to add the allow AS in. So you know that for router two by default, it's not going to filter it outbound uh, like the AX arrow counterpart does. So what is going to happen is that when router two forward it to router six, we are going to tell router six that when you link prefixes that contains your own AS, we want you to allow it in. Okay. So we are going to tell router two. We are going to see it when we apply the command. It's going to act. We are going. To, we can also specify how many of our AS prepend. How many times could that AS be prepended on those prefix before we accept them? I think by default is one, but we can say two. So even if we see those are prefixes multiple times on the same prefix that we are learning, we can go ahead and advertise it. We can go ahead. I mean, and accept it. So if I if I if we should go back again and explain, so here we are going to use the term. Here we are not going to uh, really do anything here, okay? Because we just allow them in. But on router six, we are going to say when you learn those prefixes on router six, we want you to allow them in, okay? So we are going to set the default to one. But on router four, we are going to say when you advertise those prefixes to router six, please override the that AS of fifty six. Similarly, on router 1, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to tell router 1 that when you see these prefixes being advertised, okay, with this autonomous system being advertised on router 5, we want you to go ahead and overwrite it with uh, your own autonomous system number, which in this case is uh, AS1. So here too, we're going to use the allow AS in. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. That's how one of the uh, many options that we can use to uh, solve this kind of issues. You know, typically in the real world, you are going to have customers that are multi-home, right? So you are going to have customers that uh, have branches across your country, across the continent, okay? And they are going to be, uh, depends on the size of your footprint across uh, uh, your region, you are going to be multi-home to this your same uh, provider, okay? And so you could have the design issues, especially when they are running the same autonomous system, and they are pairing eBGP to uh, uh, the ISP. So in this case, most time the ISP will either have to override the AS or simply uh, send them to to those eBGP pairs. And now, well, of course, the customer. And now, of uh, do uh, configure their own end to accept those uh, prefixes. Uh, there are a lot of design issues that are associated with this. Uh, you know, typically in the real world, do uh, you go have customers who have dual last mile connectivity to the same provider, and they can tell you, oh, we want this two link to be active at the same time. Let the uh, well, we might set one part as the primary link, we set the other part as the secondary link. I say for critical traffic, we want them to go through the primary link for uh, 
uh, non-critical traffic, we want them to go through the secondary lane, kind of things like that. Okay, so uh, this is a typical example. This you can get, you can have this in the real world, and of course, uh, these are ways that we can uh, uh, solve the issue. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go to so I'm going to go to router one. So we're going to begin with uh, we could go to router four or router one. So if I go to router four, let's go to router four. Uh, where's my router four? We don't have it here. Okay, I have it. So router four, I'm just going to say show run router BGP. Okay, so I'm going to look for that area with router six. So I'm just going to grab this. Just one command. I'm going to say config T. Okay, I'm going to say when you pair with this neighbor, you want to do AS override. Okay, so that that's all we need to do. I'm going to hit commit. So what that immediately means is that when you let prefixes that that has AS path information for 56 here, 56, then router 4 is going to uh uh, override that information and then uh, send it to router 6. So if we now go to router 6 here, I will say show IP BGP. Okay, so, uh, so as you can see here, we are now going to be learning prefixes from 5 to 5. You can see that we are now learning 5 to 5, right? Now look at the difference. Originally, it should be coming from 56 then through uh, the ISP, right? But what the ISP ended up doing now was to override the AS56 with its own AS, and so it, it, it's as if uh, uh, AS1 was prepend, was prepended on those prefix, right? So we also look for 1.5, I guess we still do the same thing, so we are still learning uh, about those uh, prefixes uh, as it currently is. Okay? So, Similarly, on router 2, that we could do the same thing. So I'm going to go to router 2. Remember, on our topology, we have a connection between router 2 and router 6. So on router 2, I'm still going to say, okay, so on router 2, we don't really have anything to do, do we? Do we? No. So on router 2, uh, we are passing those prefixes as they are coming in. Okay, so router 2 doesn't filter by default. So what we need to do is go to router 6. So on router six, um, so I'm going to say config T. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, let's say let's see the BGP config show run show run pipe section router BGP. Okay, so here I'm going to say when you pair with router six, so for neighbor I mean router two. Okay, so I'm going to copy. I'm just going to copy and paste. I want you to do allow a as in. Okay. So this is the command that allows router 6 to accept those prefixes even if it contains the own AS part information. So if I say question mark, you can see that we can specify the number of occurrence of that our of that AS. So if the sys appears maybe once or twice or three or four or five. We can specify how many times, how many, the number of times, uh, the number of occurrence of the AS in those prefixes we are learning. So if I leave it by default, I think it's going to be one. So we don't really uh, need it to be more than one, but we can as well specify that. So I'm going to hit end. Okay, so I'm going to say show IP BGP summary. Okay, so if I say show IP, IP BGP, uh, so I'm going to hit enter. So you can actually see that we are learning prefixes that contains or that include our own AS. So this is okay. So this is not for us. Okay, so this is what I'm referring to. So in this case, it's coming from 56, going through the ISP. Okay. Uh, so our best part currently is Route 4. Okay. Uh, of course, I I think the reason is because uh, okay, so we we'll get, we'll get to that. But the point we're trying to establish here is uh, that the AS override or the allow AS in allows you to learn prefixes even if they are coming from uh, even if they contain your own AS information. Now, when you do typical designs like this, you want to be careful so that you are not uh, looping your uh, there's no routing loop. 
okay uh, uh, so uh, so the, the, of course that's one of the reasons why you are not learning it uh, at the instance of course this seems like a loop but of course it's not a uh, 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 a natural loop because those prophecies are not really coming from us uh, but they, we are learning it from our our uh, hq or from our remote uh, branch office so we also do the same thing for router one so similarly when we pair with router five i'm just going to grab this i'm going to hit copy see i'm going to paste so i'm going to say when you pair with router five okay I want to do AS override. Okay, just one command and we are good. Okay, so on router 5.2, uh, so I'm going to come out of this command. So, okay, so on router 5 already. Okay, so what we need to do is just say show run uh, pipe section. Okay, so let's say show run router BGP. Okay, so we're going to say when we pair with router 3, oh, uh i guess the command is already there uh maybe i did it before i don't remember but as you can see the command is already there here we are saying even if it contains our own es information uh three hops uh uh so if if the, the number of occurrence is three we are still going to uh accept that okay so with this for now show ip bgp I guess we should be learning all the prefixes from router 6. So currently, I'm learning, learning router 6 from, okay, so even if it contains my own AS part information, I'm still going to accept it. Okay, so on router 1, I think we should be good too, because I said when we uh, let prefixes, when we advertise prefixes to router 5, we're going to do AS override. Okay. So I guess we might need to clear the BGP session here, clear IP BGP star, I'm not sure, clear BGP IPv4 unicast, star out, uh, star soft out, okay, and soft in, okay, so if I now come and say show IP BGP, show IP BGP, so let's see, of course we we're always going to see it from out of uh, five. So, router 5, so on router 5, for 6.6.6, uh, that seems that we are still just learning it from router 3. So, let me see, show IPBGP summary. Okay, so I appear with route so, uh, 1 is not up, let's know final why. Uh, so, show IP interface brief. Hope I uh, know interface is shut down. I guess it was shut down earlier. So, I'm just going to bring it back up. It no shots. I'm going to hit the commit. Okay, so we should be good now. So if I go to back to route five, it's issue IP BGP. So as you can see here, I'm not learning those prefixes. So to get to router six, I have to part right. I can either go through router one or go through router three. But my currently, I'm going through router one. Okay, uh, I think uh, I'm not really sure why it's going to router one, but if, let's issue IP, so issue BGP, IPv4, Unicast, or 172.20.6.6 slash 32. So currently it's telling us that it has two available parts, but the best part is part number one. Okay, so I think. I think because the AS part information, I think he is seeing this AS part as one, being that they are one one. Uh, I'm not sure, but let's look at it together. So currently, if we start from weight, weight is not uh, mentioned in any of the uh, attributes, so it means it wasn't set. Uh, the local preference here is hundred. Local preference here is hundred. Okay. So what else? The AS part information. Okay. Our origin. They were not. They were, none of them was locally originated. The AS part information here is showing uh, uh, the AS part list. Uh, the AS part information here is uh, two. Here is two, but I guess the difference here is that here is one one. I'm I'm not sure, but I think this is probably the reason. Uh, maybe seeing it as just one AS that uh, it's coming from. Okay, 
but in this case you see that it's actually coming from router six and through router one because if we go ahead and look at other other possibility you are going to see uh, there's no metric to the desktop uh, okay so they are both external as you can see here they are both origin uh, uh code of idp so that's not the reason so i think the reason here why we are going through the uh, uh, part one is because the as part information seems to be the same uh, so maybe it's seeing them at one but i'm not sure i'm going to uh, read more about it to uh, know if in this kind of situations uh why a route of five will be uh of course choosing that path so currently as it is now if i now do a trace route to 172.20.6.6 i'm going to source it from loopback zero uh of course uh, i'm going to have to specify 20.5.5 so you can see we now have end-to-end -end reachability between those prefixes okay so if i now grab my script uh for for this router and i paste it here okay so i think we should now have end-to-end -end reachability to all the loopback addresses of all routers within a core so similarly on router 6 if i go to router 6 which is this part I'm going to say TCL shell. Okay, so I'm going to grab the config, I mean the script. Yeah, I'm going to paste it. So you can see we now have end to end reachability. Okay, so, uh, so as it is now, uh, I would say we now have what we call full convergence across the core. So every router within the infrastructure can get to every other router within uh, the infrastructure. Okay, so we can see that there's full convergence. And so uh, we have actually achieved that route reflection, route reflector implementation for IBGP.